a model about how the infectious disease spread. It's a system of system of differential equations. Uh, if you are if you are interested, I don't mind sharing it with you. You guys just need to let me know whether you are interested. Also, we just go to no nah, go yeah share it. That sounds cool. Sounds cool. Okay. I think this is how they uh, model this. <coughs> I think this is why they use <coughs> in the in the community where they project epidemics. I'm sure this is essentially what they're using currently to look at the uh, coronavirus. <coughs> it's called the uh, SIR model. Okay. So you basically has three different states. Okay. S stands for susceptible. I stands for infected. R stands for recover or remove. Uh, remove is basically not good news. I mean, basically the person died. So from susceptible, <coughs> you can go to <coughs> an infected state. From infected state, you can either recover and then a small percentage of that die. I mean, currently we're talking about, I don't know, some people say 1%, some people say 3%. And the way to, so we are trying really hard to develop a vaccine will be go directly to this time. Okay, because once you recover, you're not infected. You are, you cannot, you're not susceptible anymore. Okay, <laughs> the vaccine is <coughs> this, this time. And we don't have it yet. Probably earliest will be, I heard that it's end of this year. Okay, so the model is going to be a system of equations. So, uh, you feel free to ask questions, guys, okay? Susceptible fraction of population at time t. Uh, this is going to be a fraction, okay? So this is like between zero and one. This is infected. Fraction of population is 90. Out here. <coughs> Rick. Cover. Remove. Fraction of population is Okay. <coughs> I'm going to write down the equations between these guys. Uh, you guys have any questions so far on this picture and the definition of these three different quantities? So this is the set, the system of differential equation. DSDT is going to be Uh, minus BP is some constant, okay, it's a constant. <laughs> uh, B is really how, determine how infectious the, um, the disease is, okay. So DSDT, uh, the rate of change of the susceptible population, right, with respect to time, okay? It's going to be, it's going to be negative. 
it depends on the S times I. So that product of S times I, S times I is like basically they interact with each other. Okay, the people who are susceptible interact with people who are infectious. Okay, <coughs> and then <coughs> this is the constant here. And it's going to be negative because B, B stands for what again? B stands for it's a constant. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, B basically is how depends on a big number, big B means that this is is really infectious. Okay. Yeah. A small B will be just this is is less infectious. K, this constant K will measure how the constant K is measure, basically measure um, how fast you recover, okay? Uh, because for a big, sorry, this is the, sorry, this, this one, DRDT, not DIDT, DRDT, <coughs> how fast you recover. Big K means that you recover faster. Okay. Small K means you recover slow. Uh, so basically, this equation is really saying the following. Um, you have the rate here is B times S times I. The rate here is K times I. Okay, <coughs> so that's why BSDT is minus BSI because this is going out. It's going out. It's kind of like the tens, right? You remember the tens? Okay, nothing going in, something going out. Now, currently, we don't have this blue path, so I should erase it. <coughs> okay, and this one is this one is I. Okay. You recover, you get to this. DL DT is K times I. So now the other one so far would be DI DT. It's kind of like the one with the tanks. So you have the ray coming in and the ray going out. It will be what? Ray coming in will be BSI minus DI. Yeah. Uh, you guys kind of understand this. Now you add, if you add up all this stuff, if you add up all this stuff will be zero. All the right hand side will be zero. Okay. <coughs> uh, this equation here, uh, feel free to ask question, okay? Is the rate going in, is that B is less than I? Is that what you're saying right there, the top? The top here? The rate yeah. goes into the rate, this arrow, yeah. So this arrow is B times S times I. B times S times I, got it. Yeah, B times S times I. This arrow has a rate KI. Okay. So you remember the tanks? I mean, let's say the look at this guy, right? Ray coming in, subtract ray coming out, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. That's how we get these three equations. So now we turn out that. These three equations, these are nonlinear equations because <coughs> it's nonlinear because of this term here, S times I. Because of S times I, make it nonlinear. And because it's nonlinear, it's not that easy to solve. Okay? So the way that in the <coughs> the way that people solve it is you use the miracle method. Kind of similar to Euler's method, but Euler's method can be extended to system of equation also. Of course, Euler's method is a little bit simplistic. So people will just usually solve this. Uh, LK4, uh, which is, I mentioned it before, before Runger, Cutter, fourth order method. 
Now it turns out, even though we, it's nonlinear, we don't know how to solve it. It turns out that <coughs> we can actually still analyze it analytically somewhat. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to do this. Um, I'm going to write out what the IDS is. This is equation one, equation two, equation three. Now, if I use equation three divided by equation one, uh, feel free to ask questions, guys, okay? Equation three divided by equation one, I will have DIDS is equal to this guy divided by that guy. This guy divided by that guy, BSI minus KI divided by minus BSI. This one will be minus one plus minus one plus K over B one of S. Uh, maybe I just write on the on the last line here. Uh, do you guys follow this? How do, do when I divide, I get this? Do, what rule did I actually use? I actually use some rule here in calculus one. I do this three divide by one. It's like I'm canceling the dt. Is it product? What rule is that? When I cancel the dt? Chain rule. Chain rule. Yeah, it is chain rule. I'm actually using chain rule. <laughs> now look at this number here. <coughs> look at this number here. In the literature, they have C is equal to B over K. <laughs> now C is called a contact number. You may actually sometimes see this in the, in the news. Okay, they talk about the contact number. C is B over K. So C is a B over K, so this is one over C here. So that contact number is basically saying that one person, one person who is infectious, how many person you are going to infect, okay, before you recover, before you are not infectious anymore. So that contact number, of course, the smaller the better, okay. Now notice that this differential equation here, <coughs> this differential equation here, has no time in it. It's just relay I and S. Now bear in mind what I and S mean, okay? I is the fraction of infectious people. S is the fraction of susceptible person, people. Do you guys, um, for, do you guys follow this yeah. up to here? Yeah. Can you guys figure out how to... <coughs> now, you need to notice that DIDS has only S on the right-hand side, right? So can I come up with a relationship between I and S? I actually can do that by just integrating. Can you see that I can just do that by just integrating? You look at this guy. DIDS is equal to minus one on the best. So I will be what? Can you guys integrate the left hand side for me with respect to S? It's minus I. Minus, minus I or minus S? Uh, oh, S. Minus S plus one over C. One over C S over one over S. One over What's S. What's the integral of one over S? Natural log of S. Plus some constant, integration constant. This equation relates S with I. With no T in it, so the T is kind of lost. <laughs> in the middle. 
Now I can actually figure out what the constant is. <coughs> Basically at the beginning, at t equal to zero, right at the beginning, okay? Nearly everybody is susceptible, right? Nobody is infected. It's about one because this is a fraction. I is about zero. Of course, if it is exactly equal to zero, nothing will. If this is exactly one, that is exactly zero. Nothing will ever happen. No, nothing. There's no virus. Okay, but it's only approximate <coughs> because maybe it start out in somewhere in this market, right in China. Then you get one person, and then they just start to explode. Uh, so from this, we can figure out what the constant is. So I'm just going to plug the one here, plug the zero in there, minus zero plus one over C, Ln one plus constant. So what would be my constant? Can you guys tell me what would be the integration constant? I thought your I was zero. In this huh? case. Isn't your I zero? Oh, sorry. Is infected is zero. S is one. Yes. So wouldn't it be negative one plus one over C L N one? Uh, <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't look right. Okay. So what's the integration constant? One. It's one, right? L and one is zero. So the constant is one. So I end up with this. Okay. You guys okay? So this, this is actually pretty, it will tell us quite a bit. I actually grab it. Okay. I actually graph it. I'm going to share my desktop with you and show you the show you the graph. Any question before I show you this graph? Any question? No. Okay. So I'm going to show you the, um, this graph actually not like this. So this axis, horizontal axis is S, this is I. Okay. So the shape roughly look like this. <coughs> S equal to one, I equal to zero. The shape actually look like this. Okay. Roughly look like this. I, I'll actually show you the, okay. So exactly how this would like this point here will depends on C, okay? Uh, share desktop. You can see my desktop now? I, yeah. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Uh, that is the graph. The graph I'm talking about. So, uh, this graph change. This graph change as C change. Let's say if it's a contact number of two. Now this is a poem and T equal to zero. <coughs> you can see that this is a relationship between I and S. Okay. Now this is what over here, what this is saying is that at this point here, at the point where I highlight, 0 0.230 and 0. At that point here, I is equal to 0. This is a horizontal intercept, right? 
at i is equal to zero, okay, uh, this is actually eventually what happened. Eventually, everybody, so this is essentially time go to infinity, okay? The people who are infected either all recover or, or, or die. Now, what you have is that <coughs> S is equal to about 0.2. That means at that time, the fraction of people who are, has never been infected, that means they are still susceptible because they're never infected, is 20%. You guys know what I'm talking about? So that's why <coughs> some of the experts now are saying that it's going to be as much as 80% of the population is going to be infected if you don't do anything. Well, I mean, obviously, there's a, it, it, are they the distinguishing between infected and a carrier or? No, infected, um, infected is going to be a carrier. Mm. Yeah. yeah, infected is going to be a carrier. So they're not differentiating between symptomatic and asymptomatic, they're just not at that yeah. level. We're just kind of okay. them all together. Not at that level. Not at that level. Because if you are infected at some point, at some point you'll be infectious. Uh, so it depends on the disease, right? Mm -hmm. How infectious is a disease? What's the incubation period? And they are not doing that. But that's all get into the contact number. That all mm -hmm. get into the B and K. <clears throat> all reflected in the B and K. Okay? Yeah. Because if the if this is not fourteen days, it's even longer, twenty one days, then 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 your 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 B will be even bigger because you have more time to infect other people. I, I don't quote me on this, but I think something was saying that the the uh, shedding period was getting closer to eight days instead of fourteen. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was just an example because mm -hmm. the quarantine day is yeah, it's fourteen. 14 because we want to play safe. Yeah. So that, that eight day is really, is really the, the one that mm -hmm. determined B, okay? But everything's, yeah, yeah. So if C equal to two, then you will have 80, you only have 20% left. This, this here is how many percent left, okay? This guy here, as time goes to infinity. So that's why we are all staying home now. I'm trying to get this lower. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? At one point, even at 1.5, it's still like 60%. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, of course, if you get it to one, it's really good. Like one is like, it's not a problem or less than yeah. one. I mean, even if you can get it to 1.1, 1.2, you, you, you see what's going on. It's, it's especially good that they're doing this now because apparently a 34-year-old just died from it. Um, and a couple of days ago, he had just been at Disney World. Great. So either he had it, yeah. and he put it to thousands, or he got it from there. And so yeah. people yeah, are... Think that now the younger people are also more susceptible. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like people going on spring break to there or to Florida or any other <laughs> mass yeah. gathering and then coming back and carrying. Yeah. People are still, selling, still doing spring break and having big parties in Florida. Yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh the, the times like that or things like that make me think hmm, okay i want off this planet sometime so this is actually showing that because i think people are talking about the contact number is about two or something okay i'm not 100 percent sure but it's not one person in fact two people it's not really inconceivable okay even at two is really bad is eighty percent of the people will will be will be uh, infected at some time. Okay, so I just want to show this to you in case you are interested. Thank you. That was good. Yeah, we can go on to uh, <coughs> we can go on to uh, chapter five now. Okay. Uh, I also want to show you something before uh, this leading into chapter five. Um, so here, this is what we are doing on chapter five. This is what we are going to do on ch in chapter five, guys. Uh,
Did you guys do something like this in physics? Yep. Yes, we did. Okay. You have a spring, and then you just move it, and then you trace out displacement, velocity. Okay. It just goes forever. Huh. Uh, depends on whether there's damping. Mm. Damping means that there are some frictions and like things like that. If Very there's nice. no, if it's the ideal case, this will go on forever. This is showing the ideal case. No ideal case, though, right? Huh? This, this is showing, showing the ideal case, right? This is showing the ideal case. Yeah. So it's a simple harmonic motion. Okay. So we are, we are going to do this type of stuff. And we are going to solve it, get all the equation. <laughs> At first, we are to talk about the ideal case. And later on, we are talk about the one with damping. That means there's some friction type stuff there. Okay. So we are going to analyze it in great detail. Okay. You guys know what we are about to do? Yes. It's really, uh, we, we actually analyze it too, uh, really thoroughly. Okay, so I am going to stop the sharing. Okay. Okay. It looks like this. Okay. Uh, you start out with the equilibrium position. This is the equilibrium position. Then you move it down a little bit or move it up a little bit. Okay. So you displace it. Okay. Let's say this is the displacement here. You make it, stretch it down a little bit. Okay, down to here, let's say. Okay. So the displacement in this particular case. <laughs> it's from here to here, okay? That's the displacement. Now, uh, in our ball, in our ball, this is x equal to zero, okay? So x, x is the displacement. Displacement from equilibrium position. Okay, and this guy, this will be increasing x. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but I'll both do it this way, so we're gonna just follow it, okay? So going down is increasing x. That means you're pulling this spring, okay? Going up, you're compressing the spring. It will be negative x. Uh, mass times acceleration, mass mass times acceleration is equal to what? Newton's law? Net force. Is equal to force? Okay. Uh, the force, okay. Mass times acceleration is equal to the force. Uh, what is the force? The force is actually, the spring is going to pull you back. It's okay. So there's a force here. The spring is pulling you back.
So here's the force. Because the spring is pulling you back. The force is equal to K times X. X is the displacement and K is the spring constant. Okay. Because this arrow is going up, so it's negative phase. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the force is pointing in the negative direction, this is increasing x. Okay? This is increasing x. K is the spring constant. Uh, do you guys know what spring constant is? Okay. Uh. And that Basically, a spring by Hooke's law, by Hooke's law is the force is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. Okay? Yeah. So if the spring is a very tight spring, very heavy one like the garage door ones, then it will be a big K. That means uh, something, some spring which is really loose, really small spring. Small K. Small K. Is it all right? Yeah. Okay, so we have this equation here. We have this equation here. Uh, mass is the, this n is mass. X is displacement. Uh, so this is actually a what? <coughs> a differential equation of what order? Second, first, wait, second. Yeah, second. What's the second order differential yeah, equation? Square. Okay. So you can write it like this. Or dt square. Okay. And this is the type, is this linear? Is this linear? Yeah. This is linear. We know how to solve these guys. Okay, so we are going to do some example and actually solve it. Okay. Any questions so far? No, we're good. No. Okay, so um, I have a little bit about units that I have to talk about. Mass. Yes. Mass is what? Kilograms or units? Kilogram. Or grams. Uh, yeah, kilogram, grams. This is in standard metric unit right now. Yeah. But the confusing part is that pound is not actually mass. Pound is actually... Wait, what's not actually mass? Pound, the British unit. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. The corresponding one, okay, so you, you, you have this, okay. <coughs> uh, one kilogram, one kilogram would weight how much? A mass of one kilogram would weight in on Earth because of the acceleration due to gravity, okay, will be 9.8 Newton. You guys know what I'm talking about? One times nine point eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if you are talking about uh, British unit, the weight is in pound, right? This thing is unit. Some of you have seen it. One slot is crazy. Have you guys heard about this unit before? SLUG? Yeah. Yes? Did you say yes, Jenna? I'm not really. Okay. I know that it exists, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah, same here. One slot is weight 32 pounds. Okay. Okay. That one is you don't know because our book uses this slot thing for mass. So sometimes you have to you have to be careful basically. You have to know what is going on. Okay. 
I have never heard about it until I started to teach this class several years ago. Okay. One slot weighs 32 pounds. Okay. So <clears throat> this example we have, I'm going to write down here. Is there a reason why they're using that unit? Huh? Is there a reason? They use what? This unit, one slot or pounds instead of kilograms because in physics we use kilograms. Yeah, the whole, world, the whole world is using kilograms, but <laughs> in America, we are still using pounds, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I see why. All right. Just because yeah, we, I got uh, we, we yeah. Are because we are stubborn. So, but your physics book will get <laughs> all the gravitation units. You, yeah. you always use meter and all this stuff. It's yeah. Different. Yeah. It's kind of confusing. Got it. Thanks. Okay. So let's do this example. Oh, I forgot, I forgot part of it. A mass weighs two pounds, stretches. Stretches, how to spell it? Stretches, a spring. Six inches. It is released. Okay. Determine the equation of motion. The equation of motion is basically saying solve this time. Okay. Let me know when you guys are ready. Give us a second real quick. Okay, so can okay, we? Okay, you're good. Okay, can we figure out the can we figure out the spring constant? Yeah. The mass weigh two pound. Will stretch. Um, a spring six inches. So two pound stretch, two pound stretch is six inches. Okay, we can figure out. <coughs> we can figure out k. Okay because the force, okay, because the force is going to be what? Force is equal to K times displacement, okay? So the force is going to be two pounds. Force is going to be two pounds. And the displacement, I am going to change all this to feet, okay? Yes, I'm going to change all of them to fit in of inches because I mean you have to you have to use the same unit, okay? Yeah. Feet and pound, those guys are the standard units for the British system. So this is k times one half, okay? So k will be what? K is going to be equal to what's k? One. <laughs> K, I believe, is four. Yeah. Okay. K is equal to four. Um, what is M? 
Can you guys help me to figure out what's M? Two pa, how many slots is two pa? One sixteen. One sixteen, right? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. One sixteen. Okay. Because it's only two pounds. You have 32, you have to divide by 16 to get two. M is 116. So my differential equation will look like this now. Are you guys still okay? Yeah. d square x dt square <coughs> plus I think k over m right k is 4 m is 1 over 16 x equal to 0 sorry professor how did you get 116 for mass uh, because this is going to be 2 pounds that mass weighs 2 pounds from 32 to 2, you have to divide by 16, so this one divides. Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. Uh, D square x. <laughs> oh, so we're using slugs for mass? Yeah, when they do the British system. If they do the... Mm -hmm. If they do the uh, if they do the metric system, then we'll use we'll use kilogram. Oh, my God. So this both use both. I mean, they should just stick with one. Just stick with a good one, right? Then we don't have to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, we end up with this. This is an initial value problem. Can you guys tell me what is x zero and x prime zero? It's given to you. Based on these words. Oh, this is where it must be below. I, 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 it's not between, it's below. Sorry, I wrote it wrong. <coughs> so, what will be x0? Anybody? It's released eight inches below its equilibrium position. Uh, that means it's equal to eight inches. Eight inches is how many feet? Three words. Point seven five. Huh? Point seven five. Three On quarters. Seven. <coughs> On seven five. I don't think so. Yeah, it's three quarters. Two thirds? Yeah. Shoot, I can't. Yeah. Two thirds. Thanks. Sorry. I can't. Yeah, nine inches. If it is nine inches, you're right. It's eight inches. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. No problem. X prime zero is what? Upward velocity. So what's X prime zero? Is it positive or negative? Yeah, it will be negative. Is it okay? You guys good up till here? Are you guys good? Now we will do the easy part because we know how to solve this. Right? Do we know how to solve this? Now this is simple harmonic motion, okay? We are going to solve this. Uh, of a characteristic equation, please, m squared plus... 64. Plus what? 64. Good? 
Yes. So the answer is the general solution X is <coughs> C1. Uh, is there any exponential part? E to the power alpha t, right? But alpha is equal to zero. You remember alpha, alpha plus or minus beta i? Yeah. Yeah. C1 cosine. T, T2, sine 8 T. Are we still okay? You guys follow up to here? Yes. So what we learned is very useful. I mean, we can solve this differential equation. We know exactly how the spring look like. <coughs> you remember the animation I showed you earlier, the thing just keep bouncing, right? So you follow a uh, sinusoid. So let's determine C1 and C2. How do I get C1 and C2? Can you guys tell me how do I get C1 and C2? We plug in zero and two terms. Just plug it in? Yeah. Okay. I should have drawn this picture smaller to save some more space. Uh, so two over three is equal to uh, cosine is going to be cosine zero is one, sine zero is zero. So this is my C1. It's okay. Yeah. So how do I get C2? I need to differentiate this guy. It will be minus eight C1 sine eight T plus eight C2. Cosine So this one will be minus four plus three equal to eight C two. Are you guys following? Yes. Yeah. C two will be one. Negative one six, I believe. So we got our C one and C two. Okay. So this is what we have now. So x is going to be over 3 cosine 8t minus 1 over 6 sine 8t. So we have a combination. It's a combination of a sine and cosine function with the same frequency. Okay. But this actually can be combined into one single sinusoid. Okay, because you remember the animation I showed you? It's just one sinusoid, right? So I'm going to combine this into one single sinusoid using some trigonometry that you learn in Math 225. Hence, you will have. Okay, okay. So I'm going to rewrite this <coughs> into one single sinusoid. Okay? It's going to be A sine 80 plus some shift. This thing is called a phase shift. Okay? So the linear combination of two sinusoids with the same frequency is actually another sinusoid with the same frequency, but with a different amplitude and a phase shift. Phase shift means that it's shifting left and right. This is a new amplitude. And we are going to determine the A, the new amplitude, and the phase shift. Now to determine that there are many approaches, uh, you can use calculus three type stuff to do it. You can use dot product of two vectors. You can use, uh, in engineering, there's a technique, especially in electrical engineering and circuit, called phases. <coughs> you can use phases. <coughs> uh, but we are not going to do that. We're going to use something very simplistic, <coughs> but maybe a little bit longer. Okay. 
and using uh, pre-calculus. <laughs> we're using pre-calculus to do this. We are not using phaser approach. Phaser approach is really powerful. It's for combining sinusoids with the same frequency. Uh, anybody know this formula when you have sine two angles add together? Sine alpha plus beta will be what? Sine. Anybody oh, remember sure. the formula? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Sine, cosine. Plus cosine. Is it, is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So now I compare this guy with this <coughs> over here. <laughs> Compare the coefficient for these guys. Okay. Compare the coefficient. Now, when I compare the coefficient like that, A cosine phi will be one. What is A cosine phi? <coughs> <coughs> One six. Negative. One six. Negative one six. Are you guys following? Other people following? I am comparing the coefficient of sine at t. Okay. How about the other one? Compare the coefficient of cosine at t. Three over two. Two over three. Two over three. Now, from these two equations, I can recover A and the angle phi. <coughs> what is A? <coughs> A is just the square root of... Okay, maybe I write one more step. <coughs> uh, equation one, equation two. One square plus two square will give me what? One square plus two square. We'll give me a square equal to minus one six square plus two over three square. Uh, if I make a mistake, you guys need to let me know. <coughs> one over thirty six plus four over nine. Seventeen over thirty six. Is it right? Yeah. So A will be <coughs> square root of that number. Is it okay? <coughs> How do I figure out this angle fine? <coughs> Two divided by one will give me tangent fine. Is equal to Two over three divided by negative one over six. Negative negative four. Is that is it negative four? I think it's negative four. Is it okay? Yeah. So th this angle, this angle. Be this angle here. You can still see it, right? Dark here. This angle will be arc tangent of minus four. Now, arc tangent of minus four, you can put it into your calculator and will be minus 1.326. This one is from calculator. But that is not your answer. Okay? <coughs> the reason it's not your answer is that this equation, tangent phi equal to a negative number. If you look at this <coughs> ASTC stuff in trigonometry, there are two quadrants, there are two quadrants where the tangent is going to be negative. Is this guy and this guy? Okay. 
The answer from the calculator gives you this answer in the fourth quadrant. Arctangent, the output of arctangent is either in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Uh, but what do we have here? Is it in the first quadrant? It, it, so, so what end up is going to be, we know that we know that it's minus four. Tangent five is minus four. So we'll be either in second quadrant or fourth quadrant is to one of the two. Then you have to go back to here to see which one it is. Okay, cosine is negative and sine is positive. Is it the fourth quadrant or the second quadrant? Second. Second quadrant. The calculator gives you <coughs> this number, which is in the fourth quadrant. So we have to adjust it by adding pi. Okay, that is our angle. Do you guys follow all this? It's a little bit involved. Uh, professor, what if we add 180 or is this all in radians? Yeah, all in radian. The output of your calculator should be in radian. The minus one, minus one point three two six is radian. Oh, okay. And I was wondering, what does ASTC stand for again? Oh, you don't have to do that that way. I mean, it's just an acronym that people use. All students take calculus. All, this is, we talk about sine, cosine, and tangent, all positive. <coughs> only only uh, everything positive. Positive, only, only sine is positive. Only tangent is positive. The other ones are negative. Only cosine positive. I don't know. I mean, you can, you can use other ways to remember. It's just some students like to remember it like this. All right. How many of you have seen the ASTC? We all have. I mean, we took class with you, so we've seen it before. I don't know. But I mean, you tangent is tangent is what tangent is tangent. Uh, if this is x, this is y, right? Tangent is tangent theta is y over x, right? Y over x, so that's why it's positive here. Tangent here, both y and x are negative, so tangent is positive. This one, y and x, have different signs, so they are negative. Okay. You don't have to know the ASTC. So. Just in terms of, if you know the definition, tangent is y over x, sine is y over r, cosine is x over r. Okay? So it's really from the definition. Uh, I'm going to let you guys ask some questions. Is it a lot? Yeah. Uh, so just to confirm, you said phi is always in radians? Yeah, the angles, I mean, usually it's in radian in a oh. class like that. Professor, could you go over why we add pi again? Okay. In the bottom equation? Uh, because of the following. <coughs> I'm, I'm just reviewing a little bit of trigonometry here, okay? In trigonometry, this is like X and Y, and this is R. This is the an angle. What's the definition of sine theta? It's Y over R, right? Right. Cosine theta is X over R. Tangent theta is Y over X, okay? Are you with me, Megan? Yeah. Okay. So for tangent, for the for tangent theta, tangent theta, I'm just in particular for tangent theta, I'm focusing on this now. Okay. Okay. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay? Because it's y over x. Mm -hmm. 
Now the calculator, the calculator will always give you answers when you type in arc tangent. The calculator will always give you this over here because it doesn't know where you are. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so the range, <laughs> the range of the arc tangent function, okay, is actually from minus pi over two to pi over two, okay? Oh, so we're just trying to get to the other side. Yeah, because in this case, I'm trying to get to the other side because the cosine is negative and the sine is positive. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Is it good? Any other questions, guys? Um, instead of going to do the next problem, I'm going to just grab this guy for you. I'm going to just grab either this one, either this one, or the other one, or this one. Okay. So it's the same thing. <coughs> I'm going to just show you the desktop and then use Desmos to grab something here. When we're writing our answers to questions like this, can we leave the sinusoid as two separate ones or will we always have to convert it into one single sinusoid? Uh, depends on the question. Okay. Uh, if they don't ask you to, you don't have to. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, it's up to you. But I mean, this actually, in some sense, is a nicer answer in the sense that it shows you exactly what happened. Right, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Are you guys seeing my screen now? Yes. Uh, I'm going to use Desmos. I will just type in this guy, uh, two over three. Okay. Uh, make sure that I type it in, make sure I do it correctly. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, two over three. Uh, maybe I just I just do I just do the one I just do the cosine eight t then okay I need more than x okay it's just one sinusoid right are you guys seeing my screen can yeah. you see one of the sinusoid yeah the other one is sine eight x okay that you have two sinusoids. Okay, then I'm going to just scale it. The first one scale by what? Two over three. School pricing. So the green one, it just scale a little bit, right? Can you guys still see it? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit busy there. Just scale it down a little bit. And the sine one is negative one over six. Negative. Negative one over. One oh, less the amplitude. We might have a one prime there. Negative one over six. Sine. Uh, the other one also gets scale. It's uh, really busy now. Maybe I just turn those two off. So you have these two guys, right? And then you add them up together. Okay. Somehow when you add them up together, how come I can't do that? Plus? Okay. Plus this guy, you add these two together. You get another sinusoid, okay? Uh, why is it so difficult to see? Probably turn off three and four. Huh? 
Uh, let me see. Oh. Yeah, they're just, they're just very close to each other. Okay, so maybe, maybe I change my scale. Okay, maybe it's easier to see if I change my scale to make it look bigger. I can do that, right? Uh, X is from minus three to three. Y is from, I can even do minus one to one, right? Okay, you can see it now, I, I think. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. You can see all of them now. Yeah. Okay. So this is what happened. So if I get rid of those two, this is essential. This is the final answer. Okay. So you can see that, <coughs> you can see that at the beginning here, that pawn, that pawn right at the beginning, this pawn here, is where the original starting position, the two over three. Can you see is that is the two over three? Yeah. The initial position, two over three. Okay. And then it's going, this thing is going down, but it's actually going up in the physical system, right? Because this X is increasing this way. That's the reason I don't really like this convention. You know what I'm talking about. So here, here X is getting, X is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, which corresponds to the fact that you're pushing it up. Initial velocity is negative. It's okay. Okay, do you guys understand this? Can you turn on one and two? I just want. Can you turn on turn on the other ones? Yeah, one and two. Just one and two. Not not three and four? No. Four. Yeah. Yeah, those are one and two. Okay, thank you. No problem. So can you relate this to the initial, this is the, the initial point at time equal to zero? Oh, uh, professor. Yeah. yeah. When, time, when time is equal to zero, it's not the equilibrium position, right? It's when you pulled it all the way down first. Yeah, like you pull it just... down, it's not the time equal to zero, it's not equilibrium position. You start out with you start out with somewhere here, which is two third, and you push it up. Right, right. Okay. Pushing it up means x becomes smaller. And that's exactly what this graph says, x becomes smaller. Is it okay? Oh, you're pu pushing it down. Huh? You're pushing it up. You start out, you, you pull the thing down. You pull the thing down. Think about this. Okay, you cannot see me. Can you guys see me? Not really, right? So let me, let me unshare this. Okay, now, now you should be able to see me. So you have the spring, right? You have the spring. Originally, this red position, you pull it down to the green position. You pull it down by two thirds. Okay. And when you release it, when you release it, you don't just release it, you push it out. That's what they say. Got it. I don't have a spring in front of me, but otherwise, I can demonstrate it to you. Okay. So if this guy is zero, that means you call releasing it from, from rest, okay? Okay, so you, you, don't, you don't do anything, you just let go. But this is not the case, you're not just letting go. You push it when you let go. Is it okay? Okay, do uh, you guys have any other question about how to interpret all this stuff? You end up with a simple harmonic motion with this guy is certain amplitude, okay? And that's a phase shift. I mean, at the end, I need to put this thing back into here. This guy, I need to replace this by minus 1.326 plus 5, okay? 
and I need to replace this by one. 17. What's the, what's the amplitude? Square root of 17 over six. 17 over six. Okay. Uh, this section is pretty long. Okay, so we will do it more stuff next time. So at some point, uh, okay, we're running out of time anyway. So uh, we'll, we'll do cases where you have damping. That means this thing, you can think of it, you submerge it in some kind of liquid. So the liquid will give you some resistance. Anything else? I hope you follow this. Uh, do you mind showing the computer screen again? Oh, the computer screen. Yeah, I just want to take a photo of the graph. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, anything else, guys? No, thank you. Okay. Okay, have a good weekend. Okay. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay, be safe. Okay, bye. Thanks. You stay safe, too. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Let's look at the, I was just the regular.